Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video where today we are doing part one of graphing a direct variation. If you need to know how to solve direct variation equations, I have a second video for that. This one is solely on just making sure we understand how to graph it. So first of all, a direct variation is of the form y equals kx, where k does not equal zero. And when I say k does not equal zero, that means k could be a positive number, it could be negative, it could be a fraction, it could be decimal, it could be anything we we'll all just accept zero because if it was zero the equation would just be y equals zero x wouldn't even be there anymore that k value we refer to as the constant of variation which is just a fancy word to say slope but we call it the constant of variation because it's the only number that controls the equation it's that one value it controls everything so for example if i had y equals 5x 5 controls the entire equation. It's 5 times the x, that's what gets us our y. There's no other number in the equation at all. A direct variation also always, always, always passes through the origin, which would make sense, because let's say I gave you y equals 5x. The moment you plug in 0 into x, 0 times anything is just 0. So the moment x is 0, y has to be 0. It can't be anything else. So every direct variation equation we see today goes through the origin. Let's take a look at graphing. So if I said to you that a direct variation always goes through the origin, then the origin is a guaranteed ordered pair on the graph. Now, we know how to work with slope. Here's my slope, it's negative two. Negative two as a fraction would be negative two over one, and we can use negative two over one to help us plot our points in rise over run fashion. So negative two over one means we are going to go down two and then to the right one. So from the origin, we're going to go down two units to the right one unit. Let's go again, down two units to the right one unit. We're graphing our line. Now I can't really go down two units here, but instead of going down and to the right, I could also go up and to the left. So notice my points form that line. So instead of going down two to the right one, I can go up two to the left one up two to the left one. And after I make those points, I can just nicely connect them. I grab my arrows here and connect those points. And that's the equation of my line. It's got a negative slope, pretty good to go. Let's try the next one, y equals 2 thirds x. So if I have y equals, sorry about that. If I have, If I have y equals 2 thirds x, I know that every direct variation, again, goes through the origin. Now I have 2 thirds x. A slope of 2 thirds tells me to go up 2 and then to the right 3. I'll just make that little note. So from this point, up 2 to the right 3. I'd love to be able to continue that, but I really can't fit it on the graph here. But instead of going up and to the right, I can go down and to the left. Now, you really only ever need two points to make a line, but I'm, of course, making as many points as I can fit, just so we can see the full graph, and that's what y equals 2 thirds x would look like. Pretty simple. Let's try another one. y equals 0.5x. Now, 0.5, we should know that decimal is really 1 half. And if we use it as 1 half, it's going to really help us graph it. First of all, every direct variation goes through the origin. Then if I have a slope of 1 half, that's going to tell me to go up 1 to the right, two up one to the right two instead of going up and to the right i can also go down and to the left so down one to the left two let's connect those up good make our line and that's our graph y equals 0.5 x last one here again every direct variation goes through the origin negative three-fourths. Now, anytime you have a negative fraction, that negative only gets used once. It can technically go to the three, it can go to the four, but it can't go to both. Because if it goes to both, negative three over negative four is a positive, and then it's not negative anymore. What I always suggest is just send that negative to the numerator. So I'm gonna refer to it as negative three-fourths. So if it says negative three-fourths, that would tell me to go down three, and then to the right four. And instead of going down three to the right four, I can also go up three to the left four. And notice it is a negative slope, so it is decreasing from left to right. That's how we read our graph. That's it, that's how you graph a direct variation. Let's try some other ones here. I'm going to fix my screen real quick. All right, 
I'm also going to zoom out just a smidge. Let's try one more. Nope, we'll go to that. Okay, just so we can see half the screen at a time. All right, so here we have to do some translating. It says the y value is negative three times the value of x. So that equation would look like y equals negative three x. Now I have a blank table for us. We can technically fill in any values of x that we want. And you should feel very comfortable just knowing that, hey, if this is the graph I'm working with, I may as well fill in x values that I know exist on this graph. Um, if I started at zero, I might go up to four and, you know, three, negative three times four is going to be way off my graph. So kind of estimating in advance is going to be helpful. Let's start substituting these in. So negative three times negative two is six. Negative three times negative one is three. Negative three times zero is zero. Hey, look at that, the origin. Every direct variation goes to the origin. Negative three times one is negative three, and negative three times two is negative six. Now, I know negative two, six is gonna be off my grid here. I could plot where I think it is, or you only need two points to make a line. And I know I can fit these three middle points in here, no problem, um, but again, that's up to you. But here's where those points would be. Again, that one would be a little off the grid. And that's the equation of my line, y equals negative 3x. Even if I looked at the origin, guys, take a look. Here's my origin. I would go down 3 to the right 1, and boom, there's my next point. Instead of going down 3 to the right 1, I could always go up 3 and to the left 1. And notice it's on the line. The next one, the y value is 2 fifths times the value of x. Floppy 2 fifths. Okay, so y equals 2 fifths x. All right. Um, so let's say I filled in some values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now negative 2 times 2 fifths is negative 4 fifths. 2 fifths times negative 1 is negative 2 fifths. Negative, uh, 2 fifths times 0 is 0. 2 fifths times 1 is positive 2 fifths. 2 fifths times 2 is 4 fifths. So these may be a little tougher to plot, but it's going to go in a straight line. So negative 2, negative 4 fifths. So close to 1, but negative 1, but not exactly there. Negative 1 and then negative 2 fifths. So closer to the 0, a little past halfway, 0, 0, positive 2 fifths, and then positive 4 fifths. And I know it's a really, really tiny line to see, but it will work. Now, what if I use a nice x value, like 5? I know it's kind of skipping around from the table. But what's 2 fifths times 5? It's 2. So 5, 2 is actually a point on that graph. What if I plugged in a negative 5 for x? 2 fifths times negative 5 would be negative 2. So negative 5, negative 2 are also on that line. And if I was to connect those points that I originally had and those new points, it goes exactly right through. The total cost C of gasoline is $3 times the number of gasoline, gasoline, uh, gallons G, excuse me. Now, for gallons, you can't have negative gallons. The smallest amount of gallons you can have is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just do zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, zero gallons of gas, three times zero would be zero. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Obviously, these are going to be very, very easy numbers to get. And I'm going to go ahead and plot them. 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6. I don't really need to fit the other graphs. If you, uh, points rather, if you wanted to change your intervals and maybe have your y-axis go by different values, you totally could, could, but I just went by ones. Pretty simple, straightforward. Last one, the total cost C of bulk jelly beans is $2.50 times the number of pounds P. Can't have negative pounds of jelly beans, so we're going to start at zero, not negatives. 250 per pound, so zero pounds would cost zero dollars. One pound would cost 250. Two pounds would cost five dollars. Three pounds would cost 750. Four pounds would cost ten dollars. So zero, zero. Now, hey, let's just for fun change maybe our scales. Maybe I want to skip every two to make this one, two three, four, just to kind of spread out my graph. I can keep this going up to 10, that's no problem. So zero, zero is my first point. 
one and then two and a half would be here. Two, five, three, seven point five, and then four is off the grid. That's okay. Let's connect these points. And that would be the line that represents that direct variation. I hope this was an easy enough video for you to follow along. Check out my other video if you need direct variation equation problems. Thanks for watching. Bye.